Hello there everyone, it is Mitsu here and welcome back to another video on my channel. Today we will be analyzing Manchester City's Ilkay Gundogan. Let's start by talking about his off the ball movement. So we have all seen how Pep Guardiola has been playing recently without a main striker. In my opinion, that gave him the freedom that he needed to show his abilities. So in this clip, you can see how Gundogan performed many runs asking for possible key passes, but the link was not made. However, he kept repeating the same concept looking for spaces to exploit, until he finally got the ball. Now obviously he got a lot of attacking responsibilities, so he drops down to get the ball from the midfield and continues to get inside the box to outnumber the opposition. Here you can see how he quickly adapts to any changes in the opposition's defense. Notice how he checks his shoulders to know if he is onside or not and then quickly performs the run asking for the ball. Let's move to his unique way of keeping the ball under pressure. So statistically, he received a total of 1295 passes out of 1432 originally targeted at him. That's him succeeding in keeping the ball over 90% of the time. Even after controlling the ball with his first touch, he is really good at doing this kind of move where he changes his direction quickly and adds a bit of body fence to fake his movement. By doing so, he totally gets rid of the pressure and even gives himself enough time to decide what to do next. He completed a total of 23 dribbles so far this season, which is his highest compared to the last 4 seasons. Notice how he checks his shoulders before receiving the ball to know where the opposition is going to apply the pressure from. I've made a full video explaining how to perform this move yourself, so if you are interested, you will find the link to that video in the description down below. Before we continue, I just wanted to let you guys know that I'm now on Instagram. If you want to get involved and know when videos are about to drop or decide what you want to see here on YouTube, make sure to follow me over there since we will be doing many polls and stuff to decide future videos. And you can always send me DMs if you need any tips or have any suggestions. I'll be uploading content every single day over there, and it will be somewhat connected to what you see here as well. Back to the video, now we move to his positional awareness. You may notice how he is constantly scanning the pitch before receiving the ball. This allows him to take such crucial decisions. Notice how he got the advantage from his blindside run. He makes sure to scan the pitch or check his shoulders multiple times before receiving the ball. And it gives him the ability to adjust his position, or even perform forward runs in the correct time and ask for through balls. Even if he doesn't get the ball at the end, he is always working on providing possible passing options and being ready such that he takes a quick decision once he receives the ball. Moving to the forward runs. He usually performs many of these runs. His reading of the game helps him with these as he doesn't wait much for the ball after performing the run. He chooses the right moments to ask for the ball. He was actually offside once only this whole season. Now let's discuss the importance of his positioning inside the box. During the attacking phase, he usually positions himself between the midfield and defensive lines of the opposition. As the team moves forward, he always seems to find enough spaces to be positioned to score these types of goals. 
His good positioning results in easy tap-ins as you can see. As we discussed earlier in his off-the-ball movement, being active and constantly moving around makes it harder for the opposition to mark him. So far this season, he had a total of 19 shots from inside the box, from which 9 were missed and he managed to score 10 of these. He has an average of 2.17 shots per 90 minutes. So he's also got some rolls outside the penalty area. In this example, you can see that Gabriel is already inside the box, so Gundogan provides a passing option outside and gives himself enough space to shoot if he gets the ball. He also applies a pressure from this area as the team presses the opposition during the early build-up phase. He actually scored goals by applying this concept. His awareness comes in handy as he doesn't overthink his decisions, so you can see that he shoots quickly once he receives the ball or intercepts it. Gundogan actually scored more than his expected goals. As you can see on the screen, he scored 12 goals, which is more than his XG. So far this season, he had a total of 7 shots from outside the box, in which 5 were missed and 2 were scored. On screen now you can see where all of his 12 goals so far this season were scored. Gundogan's ball control abilities are another key of his success this season. As you can see in the following examples, he tends to take full control on the ball after his first touch only. And then starts to perform these body fins and quickly changes his direction to open up a shooting opportunity. Since he got different roles on the pitch, he is always able to look for spaces while roaming around to be able to exploit these spaces and help contribute in the game. His defensive contribution is alright as he already used to play in more defensive positions in the midfield. As you can see from these examples, some of his goals were scored after performing this early high pressure. He completed a total of 179 presses so far this season with nearly 30% success rate. So that was it guys, I hope you have enjoyed this analysis. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.